There is a toxin that has been quietly infiltrating our lives, microplastics and nanoplastics. Now, according to some conservative estimates, we consume around five grams of these minuscule plastic particles every week. That's about the weight of a standard credit card. So let's understand what these tiny particles are and why they're causing such a stir in the scientific community. Now, microplastics and nanoplastics are pervasive. They come from the breakdown of larger plastic items or are intentionally manufactured for various applications. So from the fibers in our clothes to the packaging of our food, they find their way into every corner of our lives, really. Now, these particles are found in our water, air, and food. Microplastics are greater than one micrometer in diameter, and nanoplastics are smaller than one micrometer in diameter. So we're talking about tiny particles here. So in other words, these particles cannot easily be seen by the naked eye. Now, here's the alarming truth. These particles aren't just harmless debris. They carry with them a cocktail of chemicals, the same chemicals that make up the plastics that they originated from. And it's these chemicals that pose significant risks to our health. The most studied of these chemicals are phthalates and bisphenols. Bisphenol A or BPA is the most known one, but there's many other ones. Now, some of these chemicals have been linked to a host of health issues, including cancer, infertility, obesity, diabetes, and hormone disruption. They infiltrate our bodies through ingestion, so when we eat food that's contaminated with microplastics, right? Inhalation, it's in the air, and even dermal contact, so by touch. But how do they exert these harmful effects? So take, for instance, phthalates and bisphenols, two very common plastic additives. They mimic hormones in the body, tricking our systems into behaving abnormally. And this disruption can lead to reproductive disorders, metabolic dysfunction, or even developmental abnormalities in children. Furthermore, you know, they are carcinogens, so they increase our risk of cancer. So there's many ways in which they harm our bodies. Now let's put this into perspective. So 50 years ago, our exposure to microplastics and nanoplastics was minimal compared to today. Back then, plastics weren't as ubiquitous in our daily lives. You fast forward to the present and we find ourselves surrounded by plastic in almost everything we touch, eat and breathe. This exponential increase in plastic usage has translated into a corresponding surge in microplastic and nanoplastic pollution. As our consumption habits have evolved, so too has the prevalence of these tiny plastic particles in our environment and, unfortunately, in our bodies. But awareness is the first step toward change. By understanding the risks that are associated with microplastics and nanoplastics, uh, we can make informed decisions about the products we buy, the materials we use, and the policies we support. We can, for example, decrease our exposure to these particles by avoiding plastic containers and uh, packaging for food whenever that's possible. And this is especially true for hot food. Now, heat causes more plastic particles and chemicals to leak into our food and drinks. So we will consume more when we heat up the container, for example, right? I highly recommend not to buy plastic water bottles. And I talked about this in another video. Bottled water contains over 200,000 nanoplastic particles per liter, according to a study published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. These particles are so small that they can be absorbed from the intestinal tract into the bloodstream and even cross the blood-brain barrier. So many of these nanoplastic particles may end up in our brains, right? We should reduce our consumption of large fish. Now, I like fish, but unfortunately, fish has been contaminated with um, heavy metals, but also with plastic components. And we're talking here about larger fish, for example, tuna and salmon. Due to the pollution of our oceans and rivers, fish with a longer lifespan can accumulate larger amounts of plastic particles. I also recommend not to drink hot beverages out of paper cups. Now, paper cups are lined with plastic, right? And hot liquids can cause large amounts of particles and chemicals to leak into our morning coffee, for example. So those Starbucks cups, they're no good. There's definitely plastic in there and you put hot coffee in there, that's a bad idea. Now, it's not likely that our plastic production will significantly decrease in the foreseeable future. Also, the amount of plastic that is already in circulation is so extensive that even if no new plastic products were to be produced as of today, we would still have problems with microplastics and nanoplastics for many years to come. So understanding how we can decrease our exposure to these toxins empowers us to minimize the amount that enters our bodies. Over time, these particles can be excreted. So when it comes to microplastics and nanoplastics, your everyday decisions can really greatly impact your health and longevity here.